Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Monday the 4th of July 2022 In today's Mill news as expected The deal has been confirmed We have our fourth signing of the summer Charlie Cresswell joins Mill on the season along loan And there he is there in all his glory This is from millfc.co.uk Millwall Football Club is delighted to announce the signing of Charlie Cresswell on a season-long loan from Leeds United. The central defender puts pen to paper to become Garrett's fourth signing of the summer transfer window. The 19-year-old is a product of the Ellen Rhodes Outfits Academy, set up and has made his full debut after an appearance in the Papa John's Trophy for Leeds under 21s in a Carabao Cup tie against Hull City in September 2020 and has gone on to gain Premier League experience with the Whites playing five times in addition to further cup appearances. Uh, Cresswell trained with his new teammates for the first time on Monday morning and boosts route defensive options ahead of the 22-23 Sky Bet Championship campaign. So there you have it, deal is done. So what does Gary Rout say about that? So this is uh, also from MillC.co.uk. Uh, Gary Rout has welcomed highly regarded Charlie Cresswell to the den as Mill's fourth summer signing, the 19-year-old defender signed a Leeds season-long loan deal on Monday morning, joining Zion Fleming, George Honeyman and Benek Phobie through the door. Travelling south from Leeds United, Cresswell has Premier League experience and will provide a commanding presence for the Lions in the heart of the defence. Rowe expressed his delight as capturing the signature of the centre-back. He's got so much potential as a player, uh, the boss said. We've seen that playing for Leeds and England on the 21s as well, he's very highly regarded. Charlie is a ball playing centre half, he can go and do all the aggressive things you need him to do, but can also step out with quality and composure. Charlie is the son of former Preston North End, Leeds United and Sheffield United striker Richard Cresswell. Charlie is coming from a good family, Rat said. I played with his dad for two years, so I know he has good work ethic. We will provide brilliant competition for those defensive options and will be very determined to get into the team and stay into the team. His signing is really an exciting one for us and he is a quality addition to a squad which is shaping up quite nicely. So Garrout seems pleased. Um, yes. Will, will there be more signings though? Well... This is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk and Gary Rout has spoken about that. Uh, Mill boss wants two or three more quality signings after Leeds defender joins on a loan. Mill manager Gary Rout reckons that the loan capture of Leeds' is Charlie Cresswell has increased the competition for a starting spot in his defence and is targeting at least another two or three quality signings. The 19-year-old centre-back has joined for the 22-23 championship season. Uh, the Lions had Daniel Ballard on loan from Arsenal in the previous campaign. The Northern Ireland International completing a permanent switch to Sunderland last week. The main thing we can we think we can add is brilliant competition for those positions, Rout told the club's website. He's got so much potential as a player, we've seen that playing for Leeds' first team at the end of last season and England under twenty ones as well. He is very, very highly regarded. He's a ball playing centre half who can go and do all the aggressive things, we've heard that before. Um, blah 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 um, Charlie will be very determined like Dan Ballard was to come and get in a team and stay in a team to give him a chance to go back and play in the Premier League for Leeds it's another exciting signing for us we want to bring two or three more quality additions into the group as quickly as we can I'm really pleased what we've done so far myself Alex Aldridge and Steve Kavanagh have worked incredibly hard trying to make these deals happen yeah, I think all the fans are quite happy as well, don't don't you agree? Um, so let's move on to this from news at uk. Um, so here we go. We're going to read some more quotes from Gary Rat. Um, I'm going to skip the first paragraph because it's, it's more or less stuff that I've just spoken about. Gary, although Rout told News at Den that he wanted to increase competition in the first team, he also said that he was keen to have versatile players who can cover a number of positions. I think there are different ways of doing it, but every player in the squad has to have competition. Whilst players want game time and they almost want to be guaranteed the chance to play games, at the same time, you also have to provide the competition so that people have to perform. That's really, really important. We'll try to find that in different ways. I've never been one for having two in each position. 
who can only play play in those positions you need flexibility in a squad the flexibility to change games we certainly want to improve every area of the squad and make people have to work to get into the team it's as simple as that how we do it is up to us to try and find the right balance Despite this, Rao did set up an approximate target for how many new additions he would like this summer, although admitted that the number may change depending on how many young players can break into the first team. I think if you look at the players we lost last year and the numbers we lost, we've got about 7, 8, 9 players that aren't here now that were here last season. But it's hard to put a number on it, it depends how many young players can push into that group. I think originally in the summer we were looking at probably 6 or 7 signings. Whether that's the exact number or whether that or whether that's less, um, that more or less or more than that will depend on how preseason goes and how the balance looks. Right. Exactly. So he did say he wanted around seven signings. So we've made four. So we're looking at three more. Maybe, maybe not. Here's another thing. Um this squad is uh, starting to shape up pretty nicely. It's looking uh, very good. Where will we be when the uh, January transfer window opens? If we are there or thereabouts, we could do some, a bit of business because I imagine there will be players who will be very much lining up to join Millwall. If we are, I mean, we could be in the top five. I mean, it's not beyond the realms of possibility. Um, being in the top five come January is one thing. Being in the top five in May is another. But we could be in the top five uh, in January. Um, and then will we will we have some room to buy bringing more signings? I don't know. But um, it's looking good so far, isn't it? Uh, so here we go. Today was the first day of training. So obviously last the whole of last week, the players were in Ireland, in Cork, on the training camp. And they are back now. They're back. They came back uh, over the weekend. And they are now, now back in, um, in London, in Calmont Road. So this is the first day of training at Calment Road. So with the pre-season training camp in the Republic of Ireland now concluded, the old squad returned to Calment Road on Monday morning for training. Fourth summer signing Charlie Cresswell was there to greet his new teammates and take part in the session and you can vo view a gallery from the day below. So there he is, there's Charlie Cresswell there. Um, and let's just uh, click through the uh, photographs. There's Charlie Cresswell there. Again, did they just take photos of him? There's Ben and Kofobi. Man, look at those fire muscles on on a phobia, man. Um, there's a lot of photos of Charlie Cresswell. Um, ben and Kofobi as well. There's Alex Mitchell there. Uh huh. Billy Mitchell. Uh, Isaac Lofi. Number twenty five. He's got there. Number twenty five. Interesting. Okay. I think that's a different number than he had last season. There's George Savile coming back into it. Obviously, uh, I don't think did he go out to Ireland at the end of the week? He may have done. I'm not too, I'm not, I'm not too sure. There's Gary Rowett selling something important. There you go. There's Nana Bateng. Tyler Burry. Interesting stuff. So uh, we're back round now. So there you go. Obviously, took pictures of Charlie Charlie Cresswell. Um, understandable, it was first day, and any pictures of him, but still. Um, now you can watch Charlie Cresswell and all of the other Mill players take part in the first preseason game on streaming service we have it announced now uh this was announced this morning this is also millwestc.co.uk stream mill's pre-season friendly at crystal palace supporters can now purchase a match pass to watch mill's pre-season friendly at crystal palace's training ground on saturday afternoon kickoff is at 1 p.m not 3 p.m 1 p.m 
The Lions begin their fixed schedule with behind closed doors showdown at the Eagles Training Complex for just five pounds. So it's five pounds if you want to watch it. You can watch all the action live, and they're actually going to be making some effort. Now I, th I think that might be. I don't know if that's from Crystal Palace's side or Millwall's side. Um, Crystal Palace streaming system. I don't know how they're going to do it. Maybe they'll take it all from them and then just have Millwall commentators on it. I don't know. Um, also, some good news um, regarding um, the iFollow, EFO iFollow. I told you last week they cheekily put through charges for the next season, even though uh, that had ended. Got an email this, today, this morning, um, saying, oh, we're, we're very sorry you're leaving iFollow audio service, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then I got a second email saying, here's an e email to confirm that we've refunded your £45, blah, blah, blah. So, like it was completely normal. Like, like it's like, um, perfunctory little, um, like it's a run of the mill thing. So just check, um, check on your, your thing. If they took money from you, check if they refunded it. They should have done. I did, I did email someone at um i think i follow fans um no efl fan support group or something like that i don't think they got back to me but i think efl got uh a number of emails from mill fans who weren't happy that the money had been taken off them so check your check your uh, card that you use for it um see if they refunded it um uh hopefully uh all's well that ends well and uh you got your money back so here they say so they got with pre-match build up multi-camera angle footage available plus commentary replays an on-screen clock wow and a scoreboard all proceeds from the stream will go directly to Millwall football club okay Click here to purchase a pass. No, it's five pounds, and this is on Mill TV. You can see that live on Mill TV. So, if you go up here, you can see Mill TV. You click on that. You need to have a Mill profile. So, if I was you, what this is, so you you've got to re-register on this site. This is the the OS. You've got to register on the OS. Uh, give them all your details blah 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 and then you can go to you can see on the top right tickets so you go to the ticket site which is the same it looks the same and then you log in there and it will say do you want to link your Millwall profile which is from the OS to your ticket account the ticket account is the same it will say do you want to connect them up so that we know this person and this person is the same person and I, I click yes and the same for the line store if you have, you've got an account there uh, one assumes um, do the same thing when you click on there you log in do you want to connect this account on the line store to the mill profile on the OS and you say absolutely buddy yes please and I think it's going to be the same with mill TV um, now this is I haven't done it yet I've got a profile I haven't paid for the uh, for the pass yet. So you buy your pass, and then it will say when you click on your profile, it will say view subscriptions. So then you view it to see did you did your pass go through. Uh, so it says here you must have a mill profile to access the stream. For further details, click here, and it will tell you how to do do all of this. Like I said, this is a Saturday at one uh, one p.m. I recommend if you have some time during a week, it, it takes like 30 minutes. It's not that much. Um, it's not not doesn't take that long. Just sign up before, get it all done and dusted, and then you've got to link a card, obviously, to the account, and you'll use that to pay for the passes. But still, no. Um, I don't believe they put up anything for the season yet. Will they have? Will they have a season ticket? Um, an audio, so audio pass. Like I said, I paid forty-five pound 
for the EFRY follow for audio pass and what that did was not only gave me live commentaries game by game home and away um, it also allowed me to view uh, highlights after a certain time extended highlights the next day or so and full match replays as well a couple of days later now I, I hopefully it will be that same level of system now I don't think it will be I think it's going to be more expensive you might have to pay game by game which would be disappointing um, but we'll see um, obviously me will have a YouTube channel the highlights go on there after midnight on the day of the game will that still be going on we don't know um, but we'll see we'll see um, we will have to see how it works out but so far what we know is Millwall TV will stream the Crystal Palace friendly this Saturday 1 p.m. and it will cost you five pounds if you want to watch it which is the going rate um, now this is separate from recast we assumed obviously that recast would show the games live because they had that capacity they we've put our under 23 games on there i've seen a couple of them on the recast app live one went went very well um the other was a bit i didn't get it till half time because it fucked up it's they kept telling me to use google chrome and i told them fuck google chrome i, I was on edge and then i had i logged in through brave i think so there you go um now this is these are all live events that are coming up on the recast app right so what they have on saturday they don't have the mill game they have some boxing they have drifting whatever the fuck that is i don't know what car shit and they have uh the qpr's pre-season friendlies are all on recast uh, the ones they have in Germany are on recast. And they have this one on Saturday against Crawley Town, which is on recast. And they got that, that is 500 recast credits, which is £5. So that's the going rate for this game uh, for pre season friendlies on the, um, on the recast app. So interesting stuff there. And as we scroll down, look, you can see the other friendlies from QPR there as well. But nothing from Millwall. So which is obviously recast it seems it's just going to just going to be for, for videos so will we not even have the under 23 games on recast now will they just be on mule tv so what's what's the deal with mule tv is that universal because when mule join recast they said one of the things about it is that there is no they said there was no geographical restrictions but someone mentioned in my comments that they can't get recast in their country which is I'm f I'm f like unfortunate, um, but um, yeah. Will we will we see the under twenty threes going games going live on uh, Millwall TV now? We don't know. We we literally have no idea now. Obviously, it's the start of July. Um, Steve Kavanagh usually does his monthly statements. I think he said he's. He's not coming back until the end of summer, so he might not do one this month. He might come back for the August one. But if he does do one, we might find out a bit more details. Probably they're still working on it. We've still got... What are we on now? So the Stoke game is on the 30th of July, which is, what, 25 days away? It's quite quite a long time in football. Um... We still just have to wait and see. We've see we all obviously got other friendlies coming up. Uh the Watford one, Ipswich are at the den, we've got the away ones as well. Will they be on Millwall TV? Will they be on recast? We don't know. We simply don't know. But like I said, uh this this Saturday, if you're missing Millwall, you can't wait to get back and get back watching. We've got this game. Obviously it's gonna be it's gonna be literally all 22 players used 11 players in the first half 11 in the second half they always do that for the first game back they they usually Dartford we play and they, they play like that so we'll have to wait and see who um yeah um which teams line up which players line up 
and how they play. The new guys, Zion Fleming, George Honeyman. Um, now it's at the training ground. There's no fans there. They don't have to impress everyone. I'm sure they'll know that people at home are watching, but it's not the same, is it? It's not the same without the crowd saying, Hey, where's Zion? So we'll have to wait for Dartford for that on Tuesday the 12th. Um, so we're going to end the video with this, um, which is news about a former Mill player. Uh, Mill will address that glove lace to Rangers transfer. Yeah, the, tra the transfer has gone through. Uh, frustrations in send off to Academy Wonder Kid. Uh, the Championship Club have been left fuming after 16 year old Lovelace left to join Rangers Academy. So he's he's gone to their academy. And we all say they are sad and disappointed by Zach Lovelace's decision to join Rangers on a free transfer. But the Championship Club say they hold no grudges against the 16 year old despite their frustrations. Um, Record Sport first broke the news that teenage talent Lovelace was heading to Ibrox. The news was confirmed tonight. He pens a long term deal. We're going to the Rangers B team. Rangers B team with a view to breaking into Gio van Bronckhorst's side in the months 10 years ahead. Where did the Rangers B team play? Did it, or is it like Brentford's B team? Did they just play round and friendlies here and there? I don't know. Uh, Lovelace's exit appears to have put Mills' nose out of joint. Earlier today, boss Gary Rout vented at the driving forces behind the deal and revealed. The club were desperate for him to stay at the den and the club have echoed their manager's stance in a strong statement uh, released in the minutes after the deal was confirmed stating they regret at the way that his move has played out. Lovelace became their second youngest ever player when he made his debut at 15 and they say he was set for a bigger role next season. Club statement reads, Mill Football Club regretfully announces that Zach Lovelace has decided to leave the Lions and join Scottish club Rangers. Lovelace made a further three appearances for Gary Rout's side during the second half of the 21-22 season and was set to feature even more prominently during the upcoming campaign. The club is disappointed and saddened by this outcome, having worked tirelessly over many months to convince Lovelace, his family and his representatives that Mill will remain the ideal destination for the striker to continue his personal and professional development. Despite these frustrations, everyone at Millwall wishes Lovelace the best of luck in his future career and hopes that he goes on to realise his outstanding potential. Um, and then they go and talk about some other crap. Um, yeah, like I said the other day, apparently the fee is £100,000. Um, to be honest, yeah, you know what would be nice? I don't know if it's going to happen. A friendly. Pre-season friendly. Not, maybe not this season. Maybe even on, not next season. Uh, maybe in November. Um, obviously, we I don't know what their the deal was up in Scotland. They're obviously not in the World Cup. Are they still breaking for it? Are they having a mid-season break for it? Um, I, I you would assume that they will. So will they need a tune-up friendly to come back into uh, December? Having a friendly then between Millwall would be nice. Um, maybe next season as well. I would prefer that to be honest with you. Um, that that would fan was it fan service? I mean, we 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 haven't had a big big name friendly for a while, and in terms of Rangers and Millwall, is not really that much. Um, it's not that content contentious. Do you think? I don't think there's a, there's going to be that much trouble versus Range, Rangers versus Millwall. Um, I don't think that relationship exists to be honest with you maybe maybe not i don't know um i think a lot of the mill supporters like rangers um in terms of their unionist uh outlook on being a scottish person so i don't think there would be any trouble between rangers and and mill obviously the police bill would still be quite large but i think it would be nice if we could sort something out, but it seems the club and uh, Rangers uh, club are not very happy with Rangers, so maybe not. Maybe that that's uh, definitely one hundred percent not on and completely out the window after what Rangers have done. Um. So yeah. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.